everyone and what's up? Welcome to What's Pup, the series that will teach you how to be the best dog owner you can be. I'm Rachel, your host and lifelong dog lover. Today I have my friends Jill and Dahlia with me, as usual. And Dahlia is a three-year-old Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Did you know that the Corgi is the Queen of England's preferred dog breed? She has owned over at least 30 Corgis. Imagine all that shedding. Oof. Jill is a 13-year-old Terrier? Well, at this point you all know that I don't know what kind of dog Jill is. She's sweet and cute and that's all that matters. Today's episode is going to be all about different dog breeds. Now you may be asking yourself, what does dog breed even mean? A dog breed is a type of dog with a certain set of physical characteristics and personality traits. There are so many different dog breeds out there. In the US alone, there are 190 different breeds. Worldwide, there are about 360. Now, I absolutely refuse to sit here and describe 360 dog breeds to you. Dahlia would be a full-blown senior citizen by the time I were to finish. No offense, Jill. But I will talk to you about several breeds of dogs that you are sure to love. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you about the seven different groups all dog breeds fall into. First, we have the sporting group. No, these dogs cannot play basketball and football. That would be cool though. Sporting group dogs were bred or raised to help hunters catch feathered game. These dogs are very active and alert so that they can stay on top of their game. Many of the dogs in this group have thick water repellent coats that are resistant to the sometimes harsh hunting, hunting weather conditions. Some dog breeds in this group include golden retrievers, cocker spaniels, and weimaraners. Next up is the hound group. They actually aren't just nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> These dogs are extremely fast and have a wide range of vision in order to catch animals like jackrabbits and antelope. These dogs also have an amazing sense of smell to better trail the animals they're trying to catch. These dogs are very determined and will stop at nothing to catch their prey. Some dogs in this group include bloodhounds, dachshunds, you know those little hot dog dogs, and greyhounds. Most are not even gray. I know, how deceiving. Moving on to the working group. These dogs can be teachers, lawyers, and bankers. I'm lying, you guys know I gotta get my bad jokes in there. The dogs in this group include some of the world's most ancient breeds. They were bred to help humans in some way. Whether it's completing a task, such as pulling a sled or fetching something to use or protecting the home and family. These dogs are more than happy to help. Some breeds in this group include Huskies, Boxers, and Rottweilers. Next up is the Terrier group. If I were to take a wild guess, I would say Jill would fall into this group. These dogs were initially bred to go underground to catch small animals like rats and mice. These dogs have a lot of energy and a bit of an attitude too. Hmm, that definitely doesn't sound like Jill. Maybe she belongs in a different group. Some breeds in this group include Bull Terriers, Pit Bulls, and Scottish Terriers. Next up is the Toy Group. These are still real dogs, not toys. They are great dogs for laying on your lap or carrying around in a purse, but I would strongly advise against that. Though these dogs aren't great for working or hunting, they are great in other areas such as being sociable and affectionate. They are also very smart and full of energy. Some breeds in this group include Pugs, Pomeranians, and Yorkshire Terriers. Next up is the non-sporting group. These are our random and miscellaneous dogs, who we all still love very dearly. The only thing that the dogs in this group have in common is that they have four legs. These dogs are all very diverse in that they are all different sizes, different coats, different personalities, and general appearance. Some breeds in this group include Dalmatians, Bulldogs, and Poodles. Our last group is the herding group. These dogs were bred for moving livestock, such as sheep and cows. These dogs work, would work very closely with their human shepherd. These dogs are extremely intelligent and responsive. They are easily trainable and crave work to do. These dogs can get bored very easily if their minds aren't being stimulated. Dahlia here is part of the herding group. <laughs> she will herd people and has in the past. She likes to have all her people in the same area so that she can keep tabs on them. It's all part of her nature. Some other breeds in this group include Australian cattle dogs, border collies, and German shepherds. So think about your dogs at home or any dog that you know. Which group do you think they fall into? Why do you think that? 
Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about one breed that is part of each of these groups in more detail. Maybe you will absolutely fall in love with one and beg mom and dad to bring one home. Let's start with a dog from the sporting group, the Golden Retriever. Now this is your very standard dog. If someone were to tell you to imagine a dog, I'm willing to bet that you would imagine a Golden Retriever. A Golden Retriever is a medium-sized dog with long yellow hair. These dogs are originally from Scotland. There is a myth that these dogs descended from Russian circus dogs, but this is not true. Also, what's a Russian circus dog? These dogs can also make great therapy dogs because of their ability to empathize and provide unconditional love. These dogs love to have things in their mouths. They love food and can easily overeat, so that's something to be careful of. They also love just carrying things in their mouths wherever they go. These dogs are very athletic. They love to swim and will probably go for a run with you. Would you want a golden retriever? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Our hound dogs are up next and the lucky winner is Basset Hound. Boy, do these guys look sad, but I promise you they are not. These dogs are long and low to the ground, a bit like our friend Dahlia here. They also have long floppy ears and droopy eyes, giving the effect that they are always sad. Their floppy ears aren't just there for being cute. These dogs have an amazing sense of smell and their ears are used as a tool to help steer up smells up to their noses. Basset hounds are loud. At home, you probably won't hear much from them, but once they are out and about, all bets are off. Their bark is deep and loud. They are very special dogs though. They prefer spending their time with people, children, and even other dogs. They're prone to loneliness though, so if you get one, you might just have to get two. But if you do, be sure to get some earplugs for the barks that sound like sonic booms. This also means that these dogs do not make great guard dogs. They will try to become friends with the person who is trying to break into your house. Would you want a Basset Hound? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Next up from the working group is the Black Russian Terrier. I love these dogs. I used to know one personally and she was the best. These dogs are massive. They can weigh up to 140 pounds and stand a good 30 inches from the shoulder. If this dog were to stand on her back leg, she would be taller than me for sure. These dogs crack me up because you just can't see their faces because their black eyes and nose blend in with their black hair. The hair on their faces is so long too. These dogs have a thick double coat to keep them warm, which is how they survived being military dogs in the cold temperatures of the Soviet Union. These dogs are very affectionate and will try to sit on your lap, but they are also very stubborn. If they do not want to do something, they will not do it. They are great with people, but when it comes to other dogs, they need to be watched and have a proper introduction. These dogs make excellent guard dogs and will work to protect your home and family. Would you want a Black Russian Terrier? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Which group do we have next? The Terrier Group. And from the Terrier Group, we have the American Pitbull Terrier. Now let me start on a serious note. These dogs have a notoriously bad reputation for all the wrong reasons. There is no such thing as a bad dog breed. Unfortunately, there are bad dog owners who raise this particular breed of dog in a bad way to make them aggressive and scary. These dogs are not aggressive by nature. On that note, let's talk about how great the American Pitbull Terrier truly is. These dogs are very social and friendly. These dogs are very determined. Whatever they are set out to do, they will give it their all to get it done. These dogs love people and crave human attention. They love to cuddle and will even pretend that they are lap dogs. If you decide to get an American Pitbull Terrier, still conduct your research on the dog's background. Would you want an American Pitbull Terrier? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Our little guys are up next, the toy group, and more specifically, the Chinese Crested. Now I'd be lying to your face if I told you I didn't think this was one weird looking dog. This dog stands at about 11 to 13 inches high and is hairless besides the beautiful hairdo, the fuzzy socks, and the tail. These dogs are just about as fun and kooky as they look. They are very playful and loving to their humans. Despite being hairless, this dog's body is still covered in a light hair. You just can't really see it. This hair must be shaved to keep the dog's skin healthy. Letting it grow out will not keep the dog warm. It will actually cause skin problems. 
This dog is extremely tolerant of the heat, but it is not the same case for the cold. These dogs need to be protected from very cold temperatures. Overall, these dogs are quite clean and make great companions. Would you want a Chinese Crested? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Next is our non-sporting group dog, the Shiba Inu. Have you guys ever heard of or seen the Doge Beam? Doge is a Shiba Inu, in case you are wondering. I know I was. These dogs have a very bold personality. They are not afraid to tell you what they think. They are athletic and move quickly and effortlessly. These dogs are very independent, so training and socialization can be a bit tricky. It's best to start teaching them these things at a young age. These dogs are very smart, but sometimes choose not to do what you want them to do despite having the ability to do it. Shibas are very possessive dogs. They have the tendency to guard their things like toys and food. Despite all this, they make great family dogs. They are loyal and devoted to their humans. They make great watchdogs because they are suspicious of strangers and will alert you if they notice anything unusual. Would you want a Shiba Inu? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Our final group is the herding group and we have a herding dog right here, the Corgi. There are two separate breeds of Corgis, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, which Dahlia is, and the Cardigan Corgi. The Pembrokes are the same colors as Dahlia. The Cardigans are usually black, or black with a mix of gray and have a long tail. Corgis are long and low to the ground. These dogs are big dogs trapped in a little dog's body. They have enormous personalities and are very intelligent, making them easy to train and socialize. They are herding dogs and will herd people when they are puppies. Dahlia used to do that and we had to train her that it is not okay to bite at people's ankles. Playtime right now, did you know? Dahlia used to do that and we had to train her that it is not okay to bite at people's ankles, though one will emerge from time to time. Despite their size, they make very good watchdogs. They are very aware of their surroundings and don't like it when anything is off. For example, I've been working from home and even though I know she loves me, she doesn't like it because it's throwing her off from her routine. Corgis love to work and can get bored easily. If they aren't kept busy, they can be destructive, so keep them active. Would you want a corgi? Go ahead and mark it on your worksheet. Now all the dogs I mentioned are purebreds. This means that they are 100% corgi or basset hound and so on and so forth. They aren't mixed with any other breeds. There are a lot of dogs out there that are mixed breeds. They are sometimes called mutts, but I don't like that word. They are a mix of different breeds. Sometimes they have a given name like the Labradoodle, which is a mix of a Labrador Retriever and a Poodle, and sometimes they aren't. We think that Jill may be a mixed breed, but it's very hard to tell what she is a mix of. <laughs> what do you guys think? In these futuristic times, you can now give your dog a DNA test to see which breeds make up the dog that is uniquely yours. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of What's Pup? Until next time, bye! Say bye, girls!